All righty, here we are in Pro Tools and uh, talking about playlists. If you're watching this on YouTube or Viddler or Blip TV, uh, I've actually got an article that this is just coming on the tail end of regarding playlists and Pro Tools. So you should head back over to the website, homestudiocorner.com, and read that. Um, and this may make a little more sense. just want to do a quick video explaining a couple of the different things I talked about. First of all, takes. Uh, let's say we've got a... I'll get rid of that one here. We've got a vocal here. And typically I do three to five vocal takes and then take the best of those. So we've already done one take here. Okay, so we've got that, and it's okay. I did it pretty quickly, um, so we want to do another take. The way we do that is we come over here, and we're in the edit window, and this little pull down next to the name is basically pulls up all your playlist um, options, and we just want to make a new one. So we make a new one, and it calls for a name, and we'll call it you know, Vox02, for example. pulls up a new track. Now we can come in here, and actually if I mute this, and we hit record on here. Now, I'm just reverbing everything. We can start recording. Check one, two, two, check one, two. Okay, so now we have this second track. And if we switch between the two, we can see that we, can, we have access to both playlists. And as far as I can tell, there's no limit here. Okay, let's come back to this. Now, that's, that's the typical use for playlists. You do as many takes as you want, then you can say, you know, take a copy of this take, you know, hit copy there, move to this one, and paste it in. You can do all that type of fun stuff. And that's the most popular way. But I talked about a couple other ways. Uh, one in which is just simply editing. Let's say for this bass track, for example. Uh, I played the bass. I played it okay. There's some timing issues, and I want to start editing. Before I do that, I'll actually come up in here, select Duplicate and it's gonna make basically duplicate this entire track. And now if we look, we've got two identical playlists here for the bass. I'm gonna come to the second one, and this is the one I'm gonna come in here and do all my edits on. So I'm gonna let's zoom out here. You know, any time where I came in a little early, came in a little late, I can come in, chop things up, move it around, do everything I need to on the timing. But over the course of editing, if you've done much of that, you know that after doing it for you know, 10 minutes or so, you can have a pretty chopped up looking section that you've moved around. And what if you're not sure if it sounds right compared to the original? The only other way to solve that would be to delete everything and to take this and drag it out and to get back to your original, but you just lost everything you did. So the way to do that is have all your edits done and then just come back to the original playlist. And there's the original performance as it was performed and determine whether or not that's good enough for the recording or if you need to go back and make some edits. Let's see, the other thing I was talking about, oh, offline processing. Let's say, for some reason, this guitar here, it's, uh, it's kind of quiet. If you take a listen. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, you can see even the levels are, are barely there. Let's say, for some reason, you want to normalize this. Uh, if we come up, and that's just an offline process, we can come up here and select, I forget where it is, I think it's in here, normalize. And it gives us a window where we can bring basically the peak level up to maximum. And we can do that, but as you'll see, when I hit process, it's going to do it. And you'll see this waveform change here once it's done. And that's destructive. That actually changed the actual file. And now I have this normalized form. And so it's, it's louder, it's more visible, all that. I'm not saying you need to do that, um, especially in 24-bit. It's not really an issue. But if you were to do that, you can't get back to the original. So I'm going to hit undo, and what you would want to do is the same as before. Duplicate that, and then apply this so you can switch back and forth. Um, and that's the other use of it. The final way that I use playlists is on my mix down. So when I mix down, I have a submix channel here, probably easier to see in this window. I route all my tracks to the submix bus, which comes into this aux, tran aux channel. And then that aux has my mastering processing and goes out to the main output. And when I'm ready to do a bounce, I simply come here and I select this bounce bus that I've created. Oh, I can't see it. I select the bounce bus. So instead of routing it out to the main output, we're now routing it over to this channel here. And as you can see, um, when I hit play, it's going to show up here. All right, uh, got the buffer too low. 
So I'll record my mix down to that. And as you can see, I've done that here. This is the first mix I did of this song. I recorded it down here, so the entire mix is here. And tonight, if I do another mix or add some more things and want to do a new mix, I'll simply make a new playlist, and we'll name it, you know, the name of the song is So Close, and then I'll put today's date, which would be, I don't even know, is it the 10th? And that'll be the name of the region and also this playlist. And I can do that over and over with all my mixes, so I have them all in one place. So if I think, you know, the previous mix sounded better, I can just come listen to it right here. And it's a very, very cool and handy feature. So there's playlists. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. Thanks again for watching and reading. If you have any comments on that or maybe some suggestions for the rest of us, uh, leave a comment on the blog, homestudiocorner.com. Love to hear from you. Thanks.